Navy chaplain Joseph Timothy O'Callaghan had been drowsily chewing on his French toast when a thunderous roar reverberated through USS Franklin, shaking her to her core. He and the other officers instinctively dashed towards the main deck. USS Franklin was the first US carrier to get within 50 miles of mainland Japan during World War II, so an attack was not unexpected. Still, what O'Callaghan was about to witness would leave him at a loss for words. Glass shards slammed the young chaplain's face as the light fixtures on the ship's corridors burst into pieces before the continuous detonations. Two 550-pound armor-piercing bombs had shattered through the carrier's decks, causing an uncontrollable inferno and leaving the vessel utterly helpless. Now, dozens of fuel-loaded aircraft and thousands of rockets and ammunition depots were on the brink of exploding. The fire spread across the lower decks, and a single breath of the scorching air could tear a sailor's lungs. Instead of fleeing, O'Callaghan's military and spiritual duties kicked in, and he began tending to the wounded, giving the last rites to his agonized comrades. Outside, U.S. Navy commanders from other U.S. ships witnessed the overwhelming damage and suggested scuttling Franklin at once. They were too close to the enemy to try to save her. However, Captain Leslie E. Garris vehemently refused. There were still close to 1,000 sailors below deck, and he would not abandon them. Come what may, USS Franklin would not sink that day. Essex-class aircraft carrier. USS Franklin was the fifth of 24 Essex-class aircraft carriers. These colossal capital ships were designed with a wartime mentality, and they were not limited by the Washington Naval Treaty that had previously crippled the size and firepower of other vessels. She was laid down on December 7, 1942, and commissioned for war in the Pacific in January of 1944. Franklin displaced 36,380 long tons while fully loaded, and could carry between 90 and 100 aircraft. The ship had a length of 872 feet, a beam of 93 feet, and a draft of 34 feet. She was powered by eight Babcock and Wilcox boilers, and propelled by four shafts and four geared turbines that allowed her to reach speeds of up to 38 miles per hour. The ship had a crew of 2,600 men that manned four single and four twin 127mm dual-purpose guns, eight quadruple 40mm anti-aircraft guns, and over 40 single 20mm anti-aircraft guns. In June of 1944, she linked up with Task Group 58.2 at a new attack island, where she served as the flagship of Rear Admiral Ralph E. Davison. It was then that her air crews tasted combat for the first time, during carrier strikes on the Bonin Islands. The aircraft destroyed multiple Japanese installations, such as airfields, barracks, and depots, to successfully ease the capture of the Mariana Islands for friendly ground forces. In July, her air crews led more airstrikes on Rota Island and Guam to support Allied amphibious operations, as the U.S. Navy had to destroy and secure multiple enemy airbases that controlled the airspace from the Philippines to Okinawa before Luzon's recovery could occur. Franklin's Vought F-4U Corsairs also conducted photographic reconnaissance missions to conduct airstrikes on other islands. The crew operated non-stop, gaining experience with every single mission. And after resupplying at Saipan, USS Franklin was sent to Yap Island to provide air coverage for the upcoming invasion of Peleliu Island. The Big Ben on September 15, 1944, tragedy struck USS Franklin for the first time. After a successful fighter sweep against Cagayan in the Philippines, the ship was attacked by three Japanese aircraft, one of which scored a hit that took three lives and wounded 20. Still, the crew eagerly moved forward and destroyed more Japanese aircraft during the Formosa air battle in October, just as the invasion of Leyte took form. During the Battle of the Cebuyan Sea, which happened from October 23rd to 26th, Franklin's Corsairs fought like madmen against the Japanese First Raiding Force under the command of Vice Admiral Takeo Kurita. The seasoned pilots of USS Franklin were even more lauded for sinking one of the world's most powerful warships ever built, the Musashi. On October 27th, USS Franklin's task group was operating south of Mindoro Island, trying to destroy a Japanese cruiser and several destroyers. Amidst the fire and smoke that filled the ambiance, the Japanese sent a unit of kamikazes to deal as much damage as possible to the Americans. 
Despite the accurate fire of the four carriers and the more than 20 destroyers and cruisers that protected USS Franklin, six enemy bombers managed to break into the formation. Three were swiftly shot down by Franklin's anti-aircraft guns, while the other two went directly to the surrounding carriers. Unfortunately, one of them managed to hit Franklin's flight deck. Although damaged, the surviving crew was able to stop the fires in less than two hours to ensure that friendly aircraft could land safely. The carrier then made her way to Elite Atoll for repairs. By then, Captain J.M. Shoemaker was relieved by World War I veteran Captain Leslie E. Garris, an officer known for his harsh, obstinate, and very strict demeanor. During the event, Garris reprimanded the crew, telling them, quote, It was your fault because you didn't shoot the kamikaze down. You didn't do your duty. You're incompetent, lazy, and careless. Evidently, you don't know your jobs, and I'm going to do my best to shape up this crew. Without realizing it, they were being prepared for an inconceivable test. A Floating Inferno After a brief stop in Pearl Harbor, where the ship was resupplied and patched up, USS Franklin was deployed with Task Group 58.2 on March 3, 1945. The fleet was instructed to launch a large-scale attack on the Japanese homeland to support the landings in Okinawa. USS Franklin became the first American carrier to sail within 50 miles of the Japanese main island. Despite the weakened Japanese defenses, the US carrier was on high alert, and her captain had ordered the crew to man battle stations 12 times in the span of just six hours. The crew was exhausted, and Garris decided to decrease the alert level to Condition 3, allowing the sailors to eat and sleep, even though the gunners had to remain at their posts. But just as the crew began to relax, catastrophe struck. A lone Japanese bomber managed to pierce the American fleet's perimeter while hiding above cloud level. And just as Franklin's crew finished launching a wave of strike warplanes, the Japanese bomber dropped from the clouds and dove directly into the carrier's deck. Before the U.S. gunners could repel the attack, the enemy aircraft dropped two 550-pound armor-piercing bombs on top of the U.S. ship. The warheads perforated the carrier's flight deck and then detonated in an overwhelming blast. Flames quickly spread throughout the ship, and scores of fully loaded warplanes began to cook off in the blazing heat. A destructive chain of detonations ensued, trapping hundreds of sailors below deck and disabling all of the ship's systems. Garris refused to give the order to abandon the ship, but many sailors jumped to the water as they fled from the growing inferno on board Franklin. The explosions had destroyed the combat information center and air plot and wrecked three of the carrier's decks. The warplanes on the flight deck soon started to explode, which caused their tiny tin air-to-surface rockets to ignite and ricochet off the flight deck, causing even more destruction. Despite the unfathomable desolation and the thick smoke that now covered the entirety of the ship, hundreds of sailors, including Navy Catholic chaplain Joseph Timothy O'Callaghan, refused to leave, venturing back into the bowels of the burning ship to help their crewmates. Battle for Survival Cruisers USS Pittsburgh and USS Santa Fe, destroyers USS Miller, USS Hickox, USS Hunt, and USS Marshall immediately rushed to Franklin's positions to aid the damaged carrier. When the rest of the American commanders witnessed the devastation, they urged Captain Garris to abandon the ship and scuttle her. However, knowing there were still hundreds of sailors below deck, Garris refused to sink his own ship and instructed the remaining sailors to flood as many magazines as possible to prevent further explosions. The rest of the U.S. vessels began to rescue the men who had jumped offboard, while several destroyers put their bows against the side of the burning carrier to save those trapped by the fire. Like Chaplain O'Callaghan, Lieutenant Junior Grade Donald A. Gary decided to stay on the burning wreck and ventured into the depth of the carrier, enduring the flames and smoke until he found 300 men trapped in a darkened mess hall. Gary then led them to safety and returned on several occasions to rescue more groups of sailors. At one point, he organized and led firefighting teams to quench the fires on the hangar deck and eventually reached the number three fire room, releasing the steam in one boiler to prevent another explosion. Gary and O'Callaghan would later be awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for their sacrifice and bravery. Ghost Ship Thanks to the efforts of dozens of brave sailors, most of the 3,200 men on board Franklin survived. However, 
The catastrophe would claim the lives of over 800 men and injure another 265. After putting the fire under control, Franklin managed to sail on her own to Pearl Harbor, after which she traveled to the Brooklyn Navy Yard, where she would spend months undergoing heavy repairs. For her gallant actions in the Pacific, USS Franklin received four battle stars for her service, and after repairs, she was displayed at the Navy Day celebrations. USS Franklin never returned to service and was decommissioned in February of 1947. She was finally scrapped in 1964. Despite the tremendous damage she suffered during the attack in March of 1945, Franklin earned the reputation of being an indestructible ship. The enemy considered her a ghost ship and claimed to have sunk her on three different occasions just to encounter her on the battlefront again. Ultimately, the ship became a symbol of American perseverance and determination during the war. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a like and check out our other Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting military and historical content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.